today I'm going to talk about what's involved in running a software development YouTube channel. I'm going to talk about how I plan my videos, the gear that I use and the process that I go through to get the videos out there. Obviously, the most important thing is that for every video that I make, I first pay a visit to the Python gnomes. Of course I don't go to the Python gnomes. Gnomes don't exist. Hi -ho. Anyway, my channel recently reached 50,000 subscribers, which is crazy. So I actually run this YouTube channel in about one day a week, plus a few evenings and weekends from time to time. Next to that, I have my day job, which is running my software company. And I also have a family, wife and two kids. The centerpiece of everything that I do in terms of planning is Notion, who are also sponsoring this video. I've been using Notion for my YouTube channel for the last six months now. And the more I use it, the more it's becoming the central hub of everything that I do with my channel. What I really like about Notion is that it's so customizable and actually it's quite developer friendly. It has an API, you can do all kinds of interesting coding stuff inside Notion itself. Notion works pretty well if you work on your own, but if you're working in a team, then they have lots of extra features that make it really useful to collaborate, to share your work. So what I'm doing with my channel is that I have an area, it's called Arian Codes, where I basically store everything that belongs to my channel. So I have my content planning, that's basically a huge collection of ideas. I have my production schedule, that's more detailed information about where each of my videos is in the production process. I have projects that I'm working on, like uh, courses and other digital products that I'm developing. There's a page with general brand information, and I have a bunch of other unrelated notes. I should probably organize this better in some way because it, it's basically a random collection of stuff. But I guess every planning system needs a place where you just put random stuff, right? So this is a shared section. You can also have private pages if you want to. Now let me show you a few things that I do with Notion. So for example, here is my content planning. As you can see, this has a Kanban board kind of interface and they have a bunch of cards here. Each card is basically a video idea. So it's not a guarantee that I'm actually going to do these things, but this is basically the place where I collect all the ideas about videos that I might do in the future. And what I did to make things a bit easier for myself is that I created these categories. So we have videos on software design, on software testing. We have videos that are more specific to features in Python. We have uh, programming concepts that are more generic. We have things about systems and architecture, so API stuff, software architecture, things, those kind of things. Things more related to personal development, for example, if you want to become a better software developer. And then I have another list called request, which is basically things that I take from my YouTube channel comments, from my Discord server, basically collect them here so I don't forget that I should also make those videos as well. So that's this list. And because this is designed like a common board, I can basically drag these things around to different areas and you can click on each card and then you basically get the information for that particular topic. So in this case, this is about code metrics. So uh, I didn't really fill this in, but I added some notes with potentially interesting things to talk about, like different types of coupling, uh, different projects that help with code complexity management. And that's basically how I start working on my video by filling in this kind of template. And this is a template that I actually made specifically for my channel. And that's the nice thing about Notion that you can do those kinds of things like create custom templates that already contain the titles and the sections that you're going to need. Now, each of these cards has properties. And these are basically database fields. The nice thing is that these properties are completely customizable. So for example, you could add a property and then you can choose a type. So they have lots of different things like a number, there's a drop down, date, person, files, media, checkbox. For example, let's say you want to have a property that indicates whether a video is high priority. So I'm going to create a property here called high priority like so, and I'm going to turn that into a checkbox. And then now it's here and then I can actually switch this on to actually show it on the card. So now you see that the high property setting is now on each of these cards and I can go into one of these cards and then I can just switch it on here. And then I go back to my view and then you see it's also enabled here. So I'm using a similar kind of view for my production schedule, but there I've actually customized it a lot more. So you see I've added this cover image here on top. I have the board view here again, and now each list in this board view is actually a production stage. So I have pre-production, where I'm basically 
preparing the video. Then we have the production phase. So that's when I'm actually recording the video. Then we have the editing stage. So this is uh, the video that's gonna come out before this one. So you probably already have seen this. Then we have the uploaded stage. And when it's in the uploaded state, it means I need to add the metadata and things like that. And then finally we have the published stage. So that's what each of my videos go through. And whenever I complete one of these stages, I just move the card to the next area in this pipeline. And then there's a lot of properties that I've added to these cards so that I can store information about these videos. So for example, if you look at my property list, so we have the video URL, there is a published date. I have a content category inside the page itself. I have a couple of title ideas. I write an outline of the different sections that I want to have in this video. So here, for example, I'll be talking about my equipment in this video and then I put everything into this card. Then there's more because once the video is edited, I have a couple of things that I need to do before I can publish it, like creating a thumbnail, adding a description to the video. And then there's also a post publication job. I want to post it on social networks. And the nice thing about Notion is that you can add this stuff really easily. So for example, I can click here on the plus and then you just choose anything that you like, like text, you can embed a sub page, to do lists, headings, let's scroll down a bit. So you see there's like lots and lots of options here, adding image, but there's also for example, code. So if I want to insert a piece of code, then what I can do is you see it already selected Python for me because that's what I used before. And you can just write your piece of Python code here. Right, so it doesn't matter what the actual code is, but it makes this really easy to integrate Python code into your page like so. Notion allows you to have different kinds of views. So I use this all the time actually. So this is the view that I'm mainly using when I'm going through my video editing recording process and I wanna know where I am in the process. But it's also really useful to have, let's say a calendar view that shows when I'm going to publish certain videos. And what's really cool is that if you're working as a team, then your entire team actually has access to these views. What's really nice about Notion is that you can actually add custom views here. So you can add a second board view or a second table view if you wanted to, or they have other things like a timeline. So you can see when different parts of your project are going to need to be finished. And again, if you work as a team, then this all this stuff is just available to you as a team. So I'm a total fan of this tool. In the coming time, I'm gonna think about ways to better integrate my entire workflow with Notion and automatically put things into Notion when they happen. And all that kind of stuff is possible with Notion because it has an API, so you can basically integrate anything that you like. So that's an overview of how I do the planning of all my content for my YouTube channel using Notion. So as I said, I really love the tool. I think you will too. You can sign up using the link in the description of this video. So now let's talk about one of my other favorite topics, gear. In most of my videos, well, except this one because this is a really crazy video, I have two main setup. I have this talking head setup that you're seeing right here and I have a coding setup. My main machine at the moment is an iMac. It's a pretty old one, it's from 2016. I'm kind of waiting until Apple releases a new version of the Mac the bigger Mac and then I'll probably buy that. Just now I actually cut my hand on the iMac. It's pretty sharp. Sorry Apple, I know you want me to upgrade, but please don't kill me. When you write code, it's important that you use the right equipment. For quite a while, I used the Apple standard accessories of the iMac. So that's their Magic Keyboard and they have a Magic Mouse. I found the Magic Keyboard to be pretty okay, but the Magic Mouse is really not very comfortable to use for a longer time. So. I decided to invest in a Logitech MX Master 3, which is much better. It feels much better in the hand, it has more height, and it works really well with my Mac. Now, that being said, I'm moving away from using the mouse a lot when I'm coding. My main IDE is VS Code, and I installed the Vim plugin, and Vim has lots of commands that allow you to navigate using your keyboard. That may sound old fashioned, but it's actually really convenient that you don't have to take your hands off the keyboard and you can navigate naturally through your code files. So that means the keyboard that you're using is actually pretty important. And I find mechanical keyboards really comfortable. The one that I'm using is a Keychron K2. And this is a lovely keyboard. It has Gateron brown switches that sound really nice. And the feel is just excellent. They have either Bluetooth or wired connection. I actually often prefer the wired connection because then I don't have to worry about connection issues or the battery being dead. Next to the MX Master 3 and the Keychron K2, I also use an Apple trackpad. I kind of stole this idea from MKBHD, so thanks Marquez. It's a really great idea because 
I love using the trackpad for scrubbing in Final Cut Pro or horizontal navigation that's sometimes really useful in Trello boards and things like that. My main camera that I use for video recordings is the Sony a7C. It's a really great camera. I normally record in 4K at 24 frames per second. I find that's a nice balance between image quality and not having too much data from really high frame rates or high bit rates. So let me walk you quickly through the set of Arian codes. So what you're seeing here is basically the backdrop that I use. So here in the corner I have these acoustic curtains that really help me get a better sound actually. I have this light here at the top that's basically shining on the back of my head to provide some background separation. Then I have here one LED light and I have another one over here. So when I record, I normally have a screen where I can view what's being recorded. So that's really useful. So actually, this is my view. It's basically some cupboards, dishes, a printer. So this thing here, that's my main light and it's on a rolling stand. So I can basically move it around like this. So normally I just put it here. So it provides this really soft diffuse light, which I think works pretty well actually. And then let's move around the light. So basically what I do, I put the camera down here. And then this is kind of the framing that you get when, uh, when I record this. Another type of light that I like to use quite a lot is these rechargeable lights by Godox Teal 60, they're called. They're really nice. They have a battery, so you can basically charge them and then put them anywhere. Well, don't put them anywhere. I mean, there are a couple of places where you definitely don't want to put these. When I'm doing my code editing recordings, I normally put these in the background to give it a nice little background color without having to move around all the lights. So that's uh, pretty useful. In terms of sound, when I record the code editor bits, I use an Electro Voice RE20. That's a dynamic microphone. It's not cheap, but it's really good at rejecting background noise. I think it sounds great on the voice, very full, warm, almost a radio-like sound which i really like and i'm recording that using a portable recorder this is the mix 33 by sound devices and that accepts an sd card so i just put an sd card in it and then i press record and it stores the data on the sd card and then later on i can export it in final cut pro which is my main video editing tool so for my voice recording in this talking head setup i use a different microphone and that's the sennheiser mkh416 it's an industry standard shotgun microphone it's also pretty expensive, but well, I'm a gear hound, so what can you do? That's what it looks like. Let me put it back up again. So what's my process for creating a video? So normally I start by taking one of the ideas from my list of content in Notion. I do some background research. Often you have to look at whether there are specific things to deal with in Python on that topic. And then I start creating an example to show how this particular thing works. Normally I pay a lot of attention to producing good examples. In particular, I find it really important that these examples are practical, that they make sense. I don't like to explain design patterns using, I don't know, pizza toppings or uh, animal subclasses or those kinds of really abstract, impractical things. I prefer to do things that are closer to what you'd encounter in a real production environment. And actually I think that's something that also sets my channel apart. So I really focus on making sure that those examples are practical and to the point. I then create an outline of the video. So the outline that's normally like one page of bullet points so that I'm sure I don't forget anything important. Actually for this video, I have an outline here right in front of me in Notion. And then the next step is to send the code to the code reviewer. So on my Discord server, I have a few people who help me out with reviewing my code, pointing out any mistakes that I make. They're always very constructive, useful comments that I can then take and apply to make the code better. So these guys, Dale, Ryan, Sebron, and Joris, they've been incredibly helpful. So thank you so much, guys. You've really pushed up the quality of the videos on this channel immensely. And then comes the actual recording. I don't record one video a week, but I actually record them in batches. So I record three or four videos in one day, and then the rest of the time is basically spent editing and cleaning up and doing all the other stuff that you need to do when you produce a YouTube video. For the audio, I first pass it through a noise reduction tool called Isotope RX. And I actually use a little Python script in the process as well, because my Mix Pre 3 export multi-channel audio, which Isotope doesn't support. So it created a Python script that basically splits the multi-channel file into separate mono channels that I can then feed 
into the noise reduction plugin. So then in Final Cut Pro, I sync up the audio, put all the clips into a project, and then it goes to my video editor. Then you're still not done, because in order to publish this on YouTube, you have to, of course, upload it. But then you have to create a thumbnail, you have to fill in all the metadata, like the titles, descriptions, chapters, tags. I add an end screen, cards with links to other videos while the video is playing, and add it to playlists and a few other things as well to prepare it for publication on YouTube. And then when the video is actually published, I share it on social media and I also post the link on my Discord server. If you haven't joined my Discord server yet, by the way, this is the link to join. So this is what I do to run this YouTube channel. And didn't even talk about all the supporting tools and the overall business side of things because that's a whole other story. Luke, I am your father. Sorry? This is my job. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> it's empty. I'm gonna have to fill it up first. So I hope you enjoyed this look behind the scenes. If you did, give this video a like. Consider subscribing to my channel if you wanna watch more of my content. Now, I'm going to hunt for a couple of gnomes, I think. So thanks for watching, take care and see you next week.